Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Adenike Babalola and in this video we are going to be looking at the IELTS Writing General Training Task 1. That is the general training letter and we are going to be looking at um, one common thing that many people struggle with and that is how to use the right tone for the kind of letter that you're given. So you know that task one for people who are taking the general training model has to do with letter writing. And you can have three forms of letters that you can have your question appearing as informal letter, formal letter, or semi-formal letter. Now the way it works is for the informal letter, you know you're writing to a family or a friend, somebody you have a close relationship with. But if you're writing a formal letter, you're writing to somebody who occupies a certain level of authority and you're not familiar with the person, you're not close to that person, the person is more or less um, somebody distant in your life, but then you need to communicate with them. And if it's a semi-formal letter, you're dealing with somebody who is in between, okay? This person doesn't necessarily have to be occupying a powerful position or position of authority. They are not necessarily formal and official, but the point is you're not so close to them. So you would call them an acquaintance or or somebody that um, you know like 10 to 20 percent <laughs> okay so the idea is when you have any of these letters you want to use the right tone when writing so many people ask the question how do i know what tone to maintain when writing my general training letter that's the task one the first thing that you need to do is to ask yourself look at the question and ask yourself what type of letter am I expected to write? Okay, now I'm going to show you, I'm going to use the examples of the four letters in the Cambridge IELTS Book 15. Book 15 um, was published this year, I think June this year. So I'm going to um, read you the questions for each of the task one in this book. So, you know, I'm going to read you four of them. I'm going to look at the tone you should maintain when writing these types of letters. So let me open the first one. Okay, so this is task one and it's on page 29. I'll read you the letter and then we'll talk about the tone you should use. We'll identify the type of letter it is. So here we go. A friend of yours is thinking of going on a camping holiday for the first time this summer. He or she has asked for your advice. Write a letter to your friend. In your letter, explain why you think your friend would enjoy a camping holiday. Describe some possible disadvantages. Say whether you would like to go camping with your friend this summer. So that's what you have in the box. Now, beneath that, you have write at least 150 words. You do not need to write any addresses. Begin your letter as follows. Dear ellipses, or what do you call this now, blank. Okay, so you have just dear dash and then you have the comma. When you see your question in the IELTS training letter, that's for the task one, what you want to do is look at it, read the question, who am I writing to? If you know who you're writing to, you'd actually know what tone to maintain because that tells you what type of letter it is. And as I said before, if you're writing to a family member or a friend, you're writing an informal letter. Okay, this is the letter where you don't have to be all serious and uptight. You just want to communicate as if you were talking to the person. Okay, so this letter is an informal letter. It means that when you're talking, you're not going to use formal words or sentences that are necessarily serious. Your tone is going to be friendly, it's going to be familial, it's going to be soft, if I can say that. So the idea is, imagine that you're talking to this person, this friend, you know, that's like what you're going to represent in written form because it's a letter. So you've been given the three bullet points. Your friend wants to go on holiday. This summer, this is their first time going out, and they want to, you know, they want to know your opinion. Um, tell the person why you think he or she would enjoy a camping holiday. Tell them what could go wrong or what um, problems they might face. They might face, and then they finally tell them if you would be able to go with them. It's just like saying, "Hey, I didn't care. I want to travel to 
um, <laughs> Erin Jesha or something. That's somewhere in Nigeria. Yeah, so you want to go there and then... Um, so I want to go there. This is me talking as your friend now. So I want to go to Erin Jesha. What do you think about it? Um, do you think it would be a nice place? Do you think I'll enjoy it? Do you think I'll experience any problems when I go there or before I go there? And um, do you think you'll be able to go with me? That's like your friend asking you in spoken form. Okay, so imagine that you're providing answers to your friend's questions on paper. Your tone is calm, soft, friendly, and um, not serious at any point. So imagine that you're responding to your friend. Um, you would say something like, um, I'm so excited that you plan to go on this holiday. You know, that sounds cheerful and friendly and vibrant. But if you say something like, I feel delighted to know that you intend to embark on this camping holiday, doesn't that sound, <laughs> what was the word? So it's, it has this, um, that's the serious undertone to it. And that's the way you would talk if you were talking to somebody in a you know in a formal position somebody that you want to be very serious and careful with so you see that gradually the tone you choose will determine the type of words the vocabulary the grammar your sentence structure at the end of the day so one thing you need to do is remember first of all that the type of letter you're writing will, det will dictate the tone you are going to use so if you know that an informal letter is a letter that isn't necessarily serious, your words would be soft and careful and, well, do I mean careful? I mean um, soft and just natural. There's no performance to it. And then one thing you should note is the use of contracted verb forms. I cannot, instead of saying I cannot go with you, you say I can't. You know, you break the C-A-N-N-O-T into a C-A-N apostrophe T, can't. So you want to use the short forms, want, can't, I'm, I'll, I'll, you know, all the rest of them. So the idea is you want to keep the tone simple and friendly when you're writing an informal letter, okay? So it means that to get to this point, you would need to try different types of informal letters see different questions and attempt them so that you can know how to relate um, with that kind of question when you see it in your exam or if you do see it in your exam. Now let's go to test two. That's the um, IELTS general training letter task. I'm sorry, task one. I mean test two, task one. This is on page 51. Okay, so I'll read you the question. A museum near your home is looking for people to do part-time, voluntary or unpaid work. You would like to do some voluntary or unpaid work at the museum. Write a letter to the museum director to apply for the voluntary or unpaid work. In your letter, explain why you want to do voluntary or unpaid work at the museum. Describe some skills and qualities you have that would be useful. Give details of when you would be available for work. Now, let me take the information beneath that. Write at least 150 words. You do not need any addresses. Begin your letter as follows. Dear sir or madam. <laughs> Excuse me. Dear sir or madam, come on. Okay, so you see that the dear something something here is different from the first one. Now, this is your salutation. It comes at the beginning of your letter and it is very important as far as your task achievement is concerned. Now, this dear sir, madam, is a perfect clue to let you know that this letter is a formal letter. <laughs> Excuse me, it's a formal letter. So the idea is you are writing to somebody in an official position because the letter says museum director. Okay, so this is like somebody who heads the museum, who is in charge of the affairs and how everything is run in that museum. Now, is this person your family member? No, and even if they were, because you are writing to the person occupying that position, you're going to address that person in their capacity, not as your relative, okay? The next thing is um, 
since you're requesting or you would like to you know do this unpaid work there the idea is you are about to sell yourself you're going to give them reasons why you would you know want to do this job and then what makes you good you know why they should consider you at all and the final thing is give details of when you would be available for work so you want to tell them okay i'd like to start in a week or something like that the idea is you know that this is official this is formal this is serious so even your vocabulary would not be mild and tender you want to sound somewhat sophisticated you want to you want to express yourself with some level of um can i use the word extraordinary <laughs> yeah you want to sound extraordinary now the goal is not to impress okay the goal is to sound as official and as you just see it as you're applying for a job okay you don't want to sound playful this is a job position you don't want to sound playful and funny and all of that you want to make your point you want to sell yourself you want to sound convincing so that you can get the job okay so it means that when you're writing this one you start with something like um I'm writing this letter to express my intention to work with your museum as a something 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 okay or for the for um yeah it's I think the question is yeah part-time unpaid work okay so for a certain period of time you want to sound straightforward okay now the first thing says you should tell them why you want to do that so your reason could be that um you okay well in nigeria now we've had um, the covid situation in universities so students have been at home so it could be that um you have some time on your hand or you, you just find that you're free and you would like to spend that time doing something productive you know helping other people or it could even be a love for art okay so you want to put that reason in your first paragraph just after you have said you know you have declared your intention for the position and as you write the but in the second paragraph and the third paragraph you still maintain that tone you know the second one asks you to tell your skills you know say what skills and qualities you have so it could be that you are attentive to detail okay so it could be that you 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 can relate with people well so that when maybe tourists or visitors come around you can engage them explain to them you know what artifacts are there and the rest of it the idea is the words you use are words that, that are serious, <laughs> okay? So your vocabulary, your tone, you just want to be respectful and careful and orderly and clear and, you know, everything that spells official or spells formality in that sense. So I hope you get it. And of course, when you're closing the letter, you just use your normal, just faithfully. In, when, in the previous letter, I think I didn't say that, you use, um, if you're writing to your friend, you have with love, you know, yours truly, yours, best wishes, talk to you soon, see you soon, you know, some, just like what you will use with your sending a text message, something lovely and friendly. But in this case, it's just yours faithfully. Okay, so let's go to the third um, letter in this text. This is um, Cambridge IELTS Book 15. I said that earlier. And we're looking at the third test, which is, you know, task one for the general training model. So I'll read you the question now. A friend of yours is thinking about applying for the same course that you did at university. He or she has asked for your advice about studying this subject. Write a letter to your friend. In your letter, give details of the course you took at the university. Explain why you recommend the university. Give some advice about how to apply simple so it's like your friend coming to you and saying hey i didn't care see you studied english language in university right yeah i like to study the same thing what do you think do you think it's a good one for me um what school can i choose um do you think do you think it's going to work out for me and you know how can i go about the whole application process and everything it's that simple <laughs> okay so if you can process it that way you know you're going to figure it out very smoothly very nicely now let me read what is below it so that you know i keep it intact it says write at least 150 words you do not need to write any addresses begin your letter as follows 
dear black comma since it says a friend of yours you know apparently that this is a what type of letter informal it's an informal letter okay so you it's going to be straight and simple and you know the same tone the tone you use for this letter is it's just friendly it's just something open and nice there's no complexity to it there's no seriousness and rigidity, rigidity rather and you know over you are not you're not trying to present yourself in any super ordinary light you just want to give advice to this friend so the first thing is um you studied a course so it means that of course you need to come up with the course you studied so i already mentioned i studied english language and let me say quickly so people say that because i studied english language it's easy for me to teach ielts and all of that i say well to an extent but i remember that just before i took the ielts in 2017 i felt very scared and pressured because i felt this is like an international exam are you sure i can do it but of course it wasn't so it wasn't a big deal exactly what am i trying to say you need to come up with a course that you studied it's, it's like something imaginary and you could treat it as personal you know it makes it a lot interesting the idea is you studied something chemical engineering okay so your friend needs you to guide them on their own decision making and the first thing you have to do is tell them about the course okay so i studied english language for four years at so 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 and the rest of it okay so just give details in the first paragraph in the second paragraph tell them why you recommend the university so explain why you recommend the university so if you're suggesting a particular university tell them give your friend reasons okay um they have lovely accommodation the lecturers are friendly the atmosphere is peaceful there are no security issues whatever your points are just make them as <laughs> don't say it so much so it doesn't get um so it doesn't look like you mentioned things you can't explain just give your friend reasons keep it simple as much as possible and then the final thing you have to do is give some advice about how to apply so you can say um should visit your website on the internet um maybe contact somebody or you know um, read the news for maybe um, you know the the start of application the application process and all of that just talk right you know with this intention that you are speaking to your friend that doesn't mean that you should use slang and all of those expressions no you want to speak in a friendly tone but you don't want to abuse it remember that this is a test that's going to be assessed by examiners so you still want to be correct even in your friendliness <laughs> and the final one which is on page 135 that's the IELTS letter writing um, for general training model yeah so this is task one I'll read this very quickly and that'll be it you have seen an advertisement from a couple who live in Australia for someone to teach their two children your language for a year write a letter to the couple in your letter explain why you think you'll be suitable for the job say what else you could do for the family give your reasons for wanting the job then what you have outside the box write at least 150 words you do not need to write any addresses begin your letter as follows dear dash comma okay so this time around it says still dear dash but you're not writing to a friend or your family member you're writing to a couple that put something in the newspaper okay or whether it's newspaper or just some other form of you know advert um some other form of um advert placement or something like that so the idea is they live in australia and they want somebody to teach them your language for a year that's teach their children not them teach their two children your language okay so my language is yoruba so it's like saying that mr and mrs brown in australia wants me to teach their two children jack and james yoruba for the all of 2021 this is 2020 okay so you i've seen that advert and i am supposed to respond to it because i'm interested okay so the first thing i'm to do is explain why i think i'll be suitable for the job first of all you need to know that you are not close to the couple and they are not occupying any special position they, are, they just happen to be parents that need the services of somebody else like a language teacher or something 
what you are doing here is a semi-formal letter. You are writing a semi-formal letter. So somehow you are in between. It's formal to a large extent, but it's a little bit informal. So the tone you maintain here is not, you're not overly serious, you're not overly formal, but you, the, the one word that rings at you or that stares at you is respect and some level of distance, okay? So you are not going to sound too rigid and, you know, uptight, no. You're going to sound well, not necessarily friendly. So let's just do that. Let's, let's say 70% formal, 30% informal. Now, in this case, because you have dear blank, it's not going to be dear brown, dear couple. No, you're still going to have dear Mr. and Mrs. Brown. You address them with their title because they are not your friends or family members and they are not... Um, they are not people that you can't call by names. They are not necessarily official people or people in positions of authority. Okay, so you're going to be largely formal and slightly informal. So the idea is, of course, you're dealing with language learning here yeah, and then their children. So you could just ask something like, um, I'm writing to, you know, notify you of my interest to teach your children Yoruba language for the period or for the entire period of 2021 um, this is based on my um, well I think I'm getting it's getting clumsy but the idea is you're letting them know that you're writing this letter to them because you saw their advert somewhere and then you want to tell them immediately why you think you're suitable so it could be that you're a native of the language that I'm a native Yoruba speaker and um, you're probably fluent in all four communication skills, listening, reading, writing, speaking. Okay, so, you know, those can be the two reasons you want to apply for the job. The second thing is, say what else you could do for the family. So it could be that um, you probably want to watch the children when their parents are at work, something like that. Or you could help the kids with, you know, assignments in other subjects, maybe when they return from school and all of that. And then the final thing is give your reasons for wanting the job. It could be for financial reasons and it could be for um, maybe just the pleasure of teaching somebody else. So this is it for the general training letter writing in the IELTS test. How do you know what tone to use? The idea is for the informal letter, keep it friendly. For the formal letter, keep it serious, official. And for the semi-formal letter, stay in between. You can't use contractions here, yeah, but you can't use extremely serious vocabulary. And the best way to, you know, figure out the tone for the three of them is to practice different types of questions and see other examples that have been written by examiners or other students, test takers, you know, in previous tests. Once again, I'm glad that I was able to share this with you today. <laughs> okay, my son is awake. Um, let me just wrap this up before we get very distracted. So if you need to take the IELTS mock test, please check my description box. You'll find the link to take IELTS.net's website there. And if you need to improve on your English, please visit EnglishNiger.com. Once again, my name is Adeni Kevavalola. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I wish you a wonderful time. Take care. Bye-bye.